say we're having trouble playing your video so hey maybe not uh, we will do a pose as well um once it's pose. <laughs> oh yeah we have to strike a pose darling if have you not seen have you not heard vogue oh we're live we're live <laughs> Good morning, uh, love sales, I hate selling uh, business page followers, not members, followers. Uh, I am joined by the lovely Sarah Davis of Travel Counselors. Um, Sarah, thank you for joining us. You're very welcome, Nigel. Excellent. Uh, well, before we start, Sarah, we have to do a pose. I can't seem to find myself. Hold on one minute. After that. We have to do a pose. We have to do a pose for the thumbnail because Facebook, it, it takes a pose of Gotta have your best one. So after three, I want you to do a beautiful pose. So one, two, three. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So we started, but Sarah, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, guys, um, Sarah is um Sarah Davis, she is a travel counselor. And what she does, she brings people's dreams to life, makes their dreams come true by providing them with a perfect holiday. Um, as you can appreciate with what we've been going through, the craziness, uh, Sarah has had to battle um, and, and jump through hoops and do things she's never had to do before. But she's still smiling. Well, she was. Oh, yes, yeah, she's, she's still smiling. <laughs> and um, I've, I've, um, I've, been, I've had the pleasure of being in a couple of meetings with Sarah, and um, she's so professional. Uh, customer service is like the thing that she does before anything else. And um, I thought it'd be really interesting for you guys to kind of get to know a little bit more about Sarah. So Sarah, let's get started. I know you're a busy lady. Um, no problem. Obviously, I've told everyone what you do, but now it's time for you to tell us what you do for a business. Yeah, so basically my name's Sarah Davis and I'm a travel, uh, travel counsellor, which basically means I run my own travel company. Um, so I look after everybody's holiday needs, um, right from like a short break in the UK, cruises, tailor-made stuff. I'm working on a fabulous trip to Italy for next summer at the moment, um, something really special. So yeah, that's what I do. Um, and I look after everything from start to finish. So right from the initial inquiry, right through to when you come home and you only ever deal with me. Um, or if I'm away, a colleague, but you, you know, you're not dealing with um, a call centre or trying to get hold of somebody. All my clients have got my personal mobile number. They text me, they WhatsApp me. Um, so yeah, it's a real personal service, and I absolutely love what I do. How do you cope with all them WhatsApps coming in? I mean, like, you must have you must have hundreds of clients now. Yeah, I've got I've got quite a few to be honest with you, wow. but um, you know that they're, they're brilliant. They they've been with me for a long time now. They know my family background. They know you know they've got oh, children and stuff. So um, so and yeah, I and that, I have yeah, I think that and, that and I think that in itself speaks volumes about what you offer um, the, the customer service side. Because let's be honest, you know, if anyone can answer this, um, have you ever gone back to your Thomas Cook representative who booked the holiday for you and says you know the happy Christmas and that? No, you haven't. But Sarah gets that. She gets happy Christmases and birthdays, and, so, and that's fantastic. That is. So, um, what inspired you to start the visit? What inspired you to be a travel counsellor? Um, ever since I was thirteen years of age, all I've ever wanted to do was be a travel agent. Oh, wow. So, um, I left school and I went to college, um, and, and then I decided that actually I needed more hands-on experience. So I left college with a job to go to, and I sort of used to be called a YTS back then. Oh, um, I, I remember them days, 27 pounds a week. Something like that, yeah. Um, and I started working for a travel agency on the high street um, and I worked my way up from being a what they called a junior travel clerk right through to a branch manager. And then um, about eight years ago, you'll probably remember the co-op and because I worked for co-op travel, the co-op and the Thomas Cook merge. Um, yes. And basically they, they closed a lot of stores and I was one of the stores that they decided to close um, because we'd got an overlap on our high street. We'd already got a, a quite a large Thomas Cook shop oh, right. and then we'd got the co-op shop as well and they decided they didn't need both. Oh. And because Thomas Cook was the largest one out of the two of us, they closed mm -hmm. us down. Um, so I decided to take redundancy because I'd been working there a long time. I'd, I'd had my daughter at the time. She was only about two, two, two and a half, oh, something like that. And I really wanted that work-life balance. Um, I didn't just want to be able to sit behind a desk all day and just serve people. I actually wanted to get to know the clients and, and really, you know, make a difference to people yeah. and make yeah. a difference to people's holidays, uh -huh. but also do it in an environment where it could be flexible for me as well. Um, so 
as part of working through the co-op we used to get travel magazines um delivered once a week and travel counselors had put an advertisement on there oh, wow. um and i think the advert if i remember rightly it said something like describing travel counselors as just a normal travel agency is like describing michael buble as just a any other singer and that <laughs> and that really resonated that really resonated with me okay. um so i called the number um got through the telephone interview screening process and then uh, i went with my colleague up to bolton and, and oh. i had an interview up to bolton and i was just absolutely blown away by the business model oh, wow. um it, it really is all about the care and concern for the client Excellent. so I, I take it you're a michael buble fan then I'm a massive Michael Bublé. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know, right? And, and, and I'm glad you raised that because this actually aligns perfectly with what I say to people about the marketing message, the <laughs> thing that appeals. You know, yeah. they obviously know that their target audience were ladies who were uh, who, who liked a little bit of a crooner, <laughs> and it caught your attention. And it's yeah. ironic. I actually um, know one of my um, friends. Her or her partner is a Michael Bublé singer. Oh. And I've got to say, the guy looks so chiselled. <laughs> I'm not jealous. He just looks really chiselled. He's like, how do you look so chiselled, man? Anyway, another story. But Michael Bublé, you see, I find out something about you already. <laughs> um, all right. So, um, yeah, crazy times. 2020. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a year. Um, obviously, you right at the coal face. It's been a massive challenge. I mean... How, how, you kind of, how, how have you coped? I mean, since March the what eighteenth, when it's just yeah, like domino effects. I mean, you know, tell us about some of the challenges that you've you've had to overcome. I know that you've you've, you've given fantastic customer service because I've heard, um, I've, as I say, we've been in meetings previously. But tell us about some of the challenges that you've had to face and overcome. I think the first thing when it all happened in late February, early March, nobody knew the scale of what this was going to be. And we just thought that it was going to be like, you know, it happened in China. It was going to be China that was affected in that kind of area. And then as it got worse and worse, um, we were hearing, you know, countries going into lockdown and whatever. And I think the immediate thing, first of all, was to look after all the clients that I'd got going immediately sort of thing. I was one of the lucky ones um, that hadn't actually got anybody abroad at the time. Um, although we did have... Um, we, we do have a central team at head office um, that look after all that side of thing, 24 hour duty care, duty of care, sorry. Yeah. Um, so all of our clients got back, you know, readily as quickly as possible, really. Yeah. Um, so I was, you know, I'd got my list of all my clients um, and it was all about keeping in touch, really, Nigel, to be honest yeah. with you, yeah. because yeah. when this happens, you know, you can imagine the first thing that happens is everybody gets on the phone. Now, you know, most tour operators, they have hundreds of thousands of people ringing every day. Um, so it was really about keeping in contact with the client, giving them the options that are available yeah. and just saying, you know, you know, I'm not going to be able to wave a magic wand. I'm not going to be able to um, get you a refund straight away. Yeah. Yeah. But what I am going to do is I'm going to be here for you, for you to call me yes. and I will just keep going until I get that refund or we get yeah. that holiday changed over. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I actually, within the first, I think, two or three weeks when it was known that it was quite serious, everybody who was traveling with me this year had had a phone call, um, a personal phone call, yeah. you know, just to let them know that I'm not shutting my door. I'm not, you know, I'm not going anywhere. I'm still here to help as much as possible. Yeah. And even when I'm not at my desk, people can still get hold of me on the phone. Yeah. And I think that's that was the biggest challenge with this was the fact that people just could not get hold of people. I'm hearing horror stories yeah. about, you know, certain airlines that are just not answering their phone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, you know, a lot of staff have been furloughed with airlines and, and hotel providers and everything. But having me, it, it does make a difference because yes. you can actually get, you, you know, you're not dealing with it directly. You're not yeah. sitting on the phone for three or four hours waiting for somebody Absolutely. who doesn't know you. Yeah. They just know that you're a booking reference on a piece of paper. Exactly. Is that, Whereas, is that, is that personal service, isn't yeah, it? It's like, yeah. You know, um, and, you know, we won't have to name any names, but absolutely, you know. Yeah. The larger companies with hundreds of thousands of customers where there's no personal connection, there's no That's emotional buy-in, they're just a number who, oh, we owe them some money. And yeah. it's almost that, oh, we owe them some money. Whereas I, from your point of view, it's, oh, this is my customer. I need to make sure that every step of the way, yeah. 
they know what's going on, and, I, and it's going to stand you in. It will stand you in good stead going forward. Absolutely. Oh, you, men- you. You, you, you mentioned about some of the refunds. Yeah. Now I know because you explained very clearly to me what's going on, and I think this is where the public kind of lost track of the reality of the situation. But I mean, are you happy to talk about why the refunds? for some people weren't forthcoming straight away. Are you able to talk about that? Well, as I say, the main reason is, is because um, it's not necessarily the company that you paid the money to that have got that money. Um, So that money may have been distributed, depending on when you were traveling, of course, um, it's probably been distributed to the hotelier, to the airline, um, to, you know, the cruise company, various other. So it's not necessarily sitting with the tour operator that you've actually booked with. And obviously if a tour operator or a travel agent refunded everybody that you know they they wouldn't have a business and then you'd have to go down a different route anyway so from a physical point of view you know you would have to wait for that money to come back to that agency anyway but the frustration is you haven't got anybody explaining that to you well yeah um you know and a lot of my clients have turned around and said look you know i've had to say to them it could take three to four months to get a refund and i'm pleased to say touch wood (laughs) Not one of them has said, well, you know, that's not acceptable. I want it back in 14 days. In a normal set of circumstances, a consumer would be entitled to a refund within a short space of time. But Nigel, we're not dealing with normal circumstances. We're dealing with a pandemic, with something that's never happened before, you know. And and if you think, uh, I don't know, a travel agent generally might do five to ten refunds a week and now they're doing a thousand refunds, you know, it's stupid numbers. You can't expect your money back straight away because the person you paid it to haven't necessarily got it. it. And that's the thing. And I think if, 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 um, if that clarity, what you've just given you know, everyone listening had been given from the start uh, that, look, this isn't a normal kind of thing that's happening now. There is a bit of a, a bit of a change. It's like buying a mortgage, it's like buying a house, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you're part of a chain. So yeah, of course. You, yeah. You pay them, the airline, they've got to, you know, book the, book, you know, buy the fuel now to make sure they've got the right price then. Uh, the hotel, yeah, hey, your guests can't come here, you give me a deposit. You know, they've got to get their money. Yeah. Um, so it all goes out. So your thousand pound actually gets split up and before you know it, it the airline company or, or yourself, 10% maybe, if, if that. But like you say, in order for you to then be able to um, refund people, everybody else has then got to them and say, well, yes, we'll give you the money back. Now, if you consider that the whole world is in the same situation where they're all worrying about work and business and everything else, people are going to be hanging on to what they've got for as long as they possibly can. So, yeah. Um, well, thank you for explaining that because I think it will go a long way to giving um, some peace of mind to some people out there. Have, have, have you been able to get a holiday yourself this year or is it, have you been purely stuck in the UK? Or the I have, no. Oh. I had um, I had a sta- I had a staycation. Staycations are extremely popular oh, yes. um, this, this year um, for obvious reasons. So I was lucky enough, I was due to have one at the end of May, um, oh. but obviously that got put back because of COVID. So we, we didn't cancel. Um, that's my big message. You know, if you, you wanted a holiday in the first place, please don't cancel. Please yeah. rearrange because when this does and it you know at the end of the day it is a it's a massive bump in the road it's more like a hole in the road at the moment but it is only a snapshot in time it, it, it will come to an end and we will get back to some degree of normality where people can freely travel again yeah. so you know you were all excited when you booked your holiday so why not you know transfer it to a new date and have that still excitement to look yeah. forward to rather yeah. than cancel yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I rearranged my holiday for July. So I had my staycation with my my lovely nan. Hi, nan. Um, hey, nan. In <laughs> in uh, in July, which was just epic, Nigel, because you know of all the stress and anxiety and everything that was going on, and not being able to see my nan as well, which was yeah. really hard. Um, to have that four night break was fantastic. Yeah, and then cool. um, we'd booked to go to Tenerife in um august kids holidays again yeah and uh we i found out that the hotel was actually closed it wasn't going to be open because of covid um it basically it was being refurbished but because the refurb had been delayed because of covid that they'd made the decision not to open it so we swapped it over to lanzarote we got all excited about lanzarote again and then obviously the government made the announcement with spain so um i think it was two weeks before we were due to leave we switched it over to greece um and we ended up in Rhodes, and we had an absolutely fantastic time it was amazing it was 
everything I, 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 you wanted. And I suppose that's the frustrating thing is that um, you literally have to kind of be ready to kind of move with the wind. So yeah, you have to now. be. Well, yeah, you have to be really, really flexible um, and sort of open minded as well. I mean, it was great for me because I was able to experience a holiday in covid time shall yeah. we say yeah. so now i can, t- can talk confidently about my clients what's you know what the airport what, what experience will yeah. look like yeah. um yeah. what you have to do on the aircraft what's expected of you the transfer the hotel experience so yeah it was brilliant for me on a business level as well as a personal level yeah. but just to yeah. see my children splashing in the pool and and having course, that normality was just absolutely fantastic so were you able to keep the same date that you had originally for tenerife or did you have to move it no we had to change it by two days um because yeah i mean when something happens like this and obviously the, the countries are you know because it's all about um all but essential travel if something goes into all but essential travel which means you have to self-isolate on the way back generally your, your holiday will get cancelled yeah. um but they are only cancelling them in a very short space of time because you can yeah, appreciate yeah. for holiday companies they want you to go on these holidays if of you course, can so they have to take pockets of time so they might work on a two-week rolling basis or what have you so i had to wait for the company to cancel and then I was able to move it over to any anything that I wanted to within that portfolio, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was so glad I did because it was absolutely fantastic. And you you're, know, you're, you're still buzzing off that. I can feel. Oh, I loved it. I, I absolutely feel the loved energy, it. That holiday, I can tell. Yeah. I, I can. It's coming out the screen, man. I'm like, whoa, it's warm. And it's not. <laughs> and it's not just. It's not just the fact that it was. It was family time, which is really precious to me, anyway. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, but it wasn't just that. It was seeing the locals. They were so pleased that yes. you were there. You yeah. know, that the restaurants yeah. were so happy to have yeah. you. Because don't yeah. forget, this hasn't just affected airlines yeah. Yeah. and hotels. It's people that deliver the fruit and veg to yeah. the hotel. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's it's a worldwide problem. And by not traveling, we're adding to the problem. Adding, I appreciate problem. I appreciate that some people need the refund because they've come on hard times themselves. You know, we've had a lot of redundancies and everything. I'm not saying it's right for everybody. Yeah. And as a travel counsellor, our business model is always about doing what's right for the client, what's right for the customer. Yeah. And that's how I honestly run my business. First and foremost, the client is the most important person in the business yeah. model. You know, the book stops there. It doesn't matter. We will always do what's best for the client. But that. it might not be the best thing to have a refund because prices next year may go up. So it yes. may be. I imagine. That I imagine. I imagine now, it will. <laughs> yeah. Well, it will. exactly. So, so you know, if you can rebook, then then rebook. Um, but if you are waiting for a refund, then just you know, all my message is is please be patient. You know, that person hasn't took your money and run run off sort of thing. They're yeah. just as frustrated by the whole whole pro- as you are. Yeah. Um, but that's the biggest message that I'll take from this is communication is the key. And, if and you, I think that's absolutely yeah. right, man. I think where, where the anger does come about is, I suppose it's about, I suppose it's that thing of, 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 of companies taking the initiative and getting in touch with you before you yeah. get in touch with them. And I think yeah. that goes a, a massive long way to kind of taking the sting out of the whole conversation because by the time that customer's on the phone to you, They've already worked themselves up into a frenzy. Yeah. Ah, la, 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 la. War and peace. I'm going to get my husband. <laughs> War and peace. They put you on loudspeaker so the kid's joining. Ah, and before you know it, this poor operator is getting abused. And it's only because, you know, she didn't get time to phone them first. So, um, absolutely. And that's why I know your customer service is top notch because when you spoke in the all for one meeting, you spoke a lot about getting in touch with your customers first and keeping them informed and making sure they understood and i think when we look at these guys as customers of any business that's what we want we just want to know that our money gives us some kind of acknowledgement and sarah does a cracking job with that so if you're looking for a holiday we plug here you know who to speak to bespoke service whatever you want to do you want to get picked up from um, the airport in a, in a lamborghini she can make it happen. You want to go across the, the Himalayas in a, in, a, in a hot air balloon? She can make it happen. You want to be Charlie um, Charlie in the chocolate factory? She can make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> she can make your dreams come true. And if you're really good, she'll even get Michael Borbeck to sing the nursery rhyme. <laughs> so, um, obviously, it's uh, crazy times. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, there are still people who will be looking to start a business now who have decided that 
I've had enough of the man telling me that I've got a job and I haven't got a job and telling me I'm redundant. As a, you know, I want to be in control of my own destiny. Um, is there any advice you would give someone who was crazy enough right now to, to <laughs> want to start their own business? Just, just basically, just stay positive. That's, you know, that's the main thing. Stay positive. Know your market. Know what you're worth. That's, you know, that's that's the thing. I'm not about matching every single price that's on the internet. Yeah. It's not the same business model. If you want to book on the internet and you're not bothered about the service you receive and whatever, then go ahead and book on the internet. You know, I'm all about the value. Now, that doesn't necessarily make me the cheapest. I'm not saying I'm the most expensive either, you know, but it's all about the value that you get, for, 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 you know, by booking with a travel counsellor. And peace I would, yeah, value yeah, it's, mind, yeah, please. value, peace of mind and knowing that that person has you back um, yeah. 24-7. But yeah, I'd say keep it real, keep it positive. Um, obviously, social media is a, is a big one as well. And keep in touch with people. Um, and be proud, be proud of what you've, you've achieved, you know, I mean, this is, <laughs> this is eight years now of running my own business. It's not for everybody. It's yeah. hard work. I work more hours now than I ever did before. Yeah, um, you enjoy it. You enjoy it. But I right? absolutely love what I do. Yeah. Love it. There hasn't been a day that I haven't thought I don't want to come to work today. Um, yes. So, you yeah. You might have got a good answer, <laughs> So no, I I absolutely love it, and you know I I don't want to do anything else. I don't, Fantastic. you know, the, the, I suppose when I was made redundant from um, co-op travel, that was a crossroads in my life. That yeah. if I'd have wanted to start a new career, then that would have been the perfect opportunity because I had the financial capital behind me to say, you know, I could start again if I wanted to. But I honestly didn't, and I still don't. I I absolutely love being travel counselor. I love the company. I love the business model. There's no other place I'd rather be, to be honest Fantastic. with you. And uh, yeah, but as I say, positivity, positivity is the key. And keep, yeah. if you can, surround yourself with people that are positive. You know, yeah. we have enough negativity um, with, we just don't need it. You know, we, we can't control what's going on at the moment. We just can't. It's as simple as that. Decisions are being taken out of our hands. But the one thing we can control is the way we react to it. Um, Boom. <laughs> Boom. Sarah Davis, man, you are preaching, girl. I love what you're saying, you know. You hear that, guys? Positivity. <laughs> this is a lady who's had to, you know, she's been at the cold face of the whole COVID pandemic. She's had to be, she's had to be there. She's had to turn up every day. She's had to be consistent. She's had to go back to people who are probably angry to begin with because they don't know what's going on. Unpaid, she's, Nigel. I don't get paid either. You don't get paid for it. <laughs> But yeah. what she's saying is she stayed on her level. She stayed positive because the reality is because she loves customers and customer service is the forefront of what she does. It's a natural thing for you to be positive when you're speaking to a customer because that's what you do. It's like, hey, to the customer, let me make sure that when they, their, their conversation with me is the best conversation they're going to have today. So, um, guys, I hope, you've, I hope you've taken some notes. I really do hope you've taken them. If anyone phones me, this will be a little bit down. I'm going to tell you to watch this video. Go and speak to Sarah Davis. If there's anybody who's interested in getting um, getting involved with travel counsellors, I'm sure that Sarah would welcome a, a call from you or a connection uh, because obviously um, with all the experience that she's got, she'll be able to really kind of help you out. And, you know, when you said that you had 20 years experience, I was thinking, actually, she's got 20 years. She's not old enough to have 20 years bloody experience. But now you've explained it. I'm like, okay. Yeah, yeah. Six, <laughs> six, 16, I've started. Oh, yeah. But, you. I mean, we are... We are um, you know, people are joining travel councillors still know, because I it know. is a fantastic and it, it, it's a real cliche, but we are a massive family. I mean, yeah. we're a massive organisation, but every single person counts. Um, I've actually um, sent someone your way recently, actually. Oh, have you? Oh, brilliant. Thank you. And as I say, that that's what it's all about. It's all about repeat business and referrals. Yeah. Um, and our clients are not just a booking reference to us. Um, yeah. I mean, to me, I get so excited when somebody comes to me uh, you know, with a holiday, I, I know why they're going on holiday. A lot of the times it's for special occasions and everything. Yeah. So it, yeah. it absolutely breaks my heart when I have to phone them and say, I'm really sorry, but your flight's got cancelled or, you know, but let's work together and see what else we can do that, that's possible. And it may not be able to do it right now, but in yeah. 12 months time, the, the celebration is just going to be bigger because exactly. this holiday exactly. is going to be something well, that big to look build, forward but... to. <gasps> yeah. Funny. There's so many parties and things I'm supposed to do this year, but I'm supposed to go to Croatia. I'm supposed to be dancing on a beach now. <laughs> oh, 
the, the rum in one hand and the glow stick in the other. <laughs> I'm here. Um, I think as well, Nigel, the other thing to remember with, with like dealing with somebody like myself um, or another fellow travel counsellor is time short. Now, people haven't got time to sit there at their computer and go through and find, you know, and would you would you you wouldn't ask a solicitor, you wouldn't try and do a solicitor's job or, or a doctor's job or something, you know, you you need a professional so why why would you try and do it yourself you know at the end of the day i don't think you save that much anyway yeah. um but it's a hassle it's, a hassle. I mean, look, it's the I, hassle I, I, and I, it's I, the time I, yeah i mean I, it's I, the I time am, i am one of those people who because i'm the internet <laughs> um very very spontaneous very last minute uh, the holidays that i tend to have so they are very much like oh i feel like going away next week oh let's book it um uh, most certainly though if i was looking for the experience like a more yeah foods, like a new zealand like a south america i ain't doing that myself it's, it's, it's too no much no and i think that. there are a lot of people that have done that but i think this whole situation has probably made people think twice mm, because mm. if something does go wrong yeah it's all about who you. do you yeah. have to call you know you would who, have who, to get who are you gonna who are you gonna call sarah davis <laughs> sorry i couldn't resist that <laughs> but yeah it's as i say you know a lot of the feedback that i've had you know is sarah we know you're on it we you know we'll just leave it in your capable hands oh, because fantastic. we can get on and do what we need to do with our everyday lives because you're you, you know you're you've got our back and that's yeah. what it's all about it's all about fantastic. being fantastic. there so superb um okay um last question actually so as you know um we have the business page we have the facebook group love sales hate selling facebook group um is there anything that any of us any of the uh, the followers of the page or anybody in the group is there anything that they can do for you at this moment in time is there anything that you need any support um you know what, what what can we do for sarah davis i think well not just me but my travel fellow travel counselors and also the travel industry in general just think do you really want that refund or would you rather you know, rebook and have something yeah. to look forward to for next year. That's the first thing. Yeah. The second thing is go go to my um, Facebook business page and like my page. Um, yes, because Sarah's going to drop all of her links in the comments to her I business am. page, yes. her website, her Twitter, LinkedIn, anything, all of it. Put it all in there, girl. <laughs> We need so, to yeah. To find you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so go ahead and like my business page and if you are thinking about some holiday plans then get in touch yeah. um you know i'm not saying i'm right for everybody but i'll always do my absolute best for you um and uh, and yeah i'm here to help as much as possible really but i think the big thing is to realize that you know support travel as much as you can yeah. because we're all going to benefit you know at the end of the day we will all benefit if we if as many of these businesses and, and stuff get through this um you know it is a, a worldwide problem not just a uk problem exactly exactly and um and i think you have like i say having heard you speak having listened to what you've done i think you've managed it as as, as well as anyone can and i think it's, it's, you know you, you, you're you going to stand yourself in good stead i think oh, you've thank got you. yourself a lot of um I say credit credit in the bank from the way that you've dealt with people there, there'll be a lot of companies who will be really struggling after all this because of the way they've treated people during this so uh, yeah you know who you are <laughs> no Corp names mentioned no name mentioned <laughs> corporate bugs uh, right okay so uh, as i say this is a, this is the first time that i've done the live on the page and um we haven't had many comments coming in fact we've had no comments coming so i would imagine that we'll probably get those later on if anybody does have any questions um for sarah um she is connected to this this um this this video so if you do put any questions in there she'll be able to answer but sarah's going to put all of her links in she's going to put every single link in so we can find her we can see what she does and then if you do want to get in touch with her independently please 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 send her a message and she will do the thing that she does best which is give you the best customer service experience you've ever had in your life. Sarah, thank you so much for today. You you're very welcome. An absolute star. Don't even know what you're nervous about because you're <laughs> absolutely brilliant. In fact, I think if I wasn't here, you'd have been able to do this by yourself anyway. So that's Oh, I don't know about that. I've never done one before. So ah, you know. fine. Honestly, you're natural. This video will go onto YouTube eventually as well. So it'll get uh, repurposed and reshared. So you'll see yourself out there again. Like, oh, come to me. Um, but please drop all your links in. And thank you so much for today. Um, so guys, thank you for joining us. Uh, Sarah, don't go anywhere. We'll have a little, a little debrief afterwards. Thank okay. you for joining us today. If you're watching us on replay, don't forget, if you've got any questions for Sarah, you can drop them in the comments 
or you can um, contact her direct. And uh, look forward to seeing you all next week, next Tuesday. Not actually sure who we've got, but we have got somebody. Hey, could just be me. Oh. <laughs> See you later, people.